Hello and welcome to Dolphin Radio. I'm your host, the porpoise with a purpose, with a face for radio and a voice for photography, Dolphin. Today I'll be presenting a reading that has to do with the Tumblrina concept of there being 97 genders. It's a story about Rob McKenna, once again, from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Rob McKenna was a miserable bastard, and he knew it because he'd had a lot of people pointed out to him over the years, and he saw no reason to disagree with them except the obvious one, which was that he liked disagreeing with people, particularly people he disliked, which included, at the last count, everybody. He heaved a sigh and shoved down a gear. The hill was beginning to steepen, and his lorry was heavy with Danish thermostatic radiator controls. It wasn't that he was naturally predisposed to be surly, at least he hoped not. It was just the rain that got him down. Always the rain. It was raining now, just for a change. It was a particular type of rain that he particularly disliked, particularly when he was driving. He had a number for it. It was rain type 17. He had read somewhere that the Eskimos had over 200 different words for snow, without which their conversation would probably have gotten very monotonous. So they would distinguish between thin snow and thick snow, light snow and heavy snow, sludgy snow, brittle snow, snow that came in flurries, snow that came in drifts, snow that came in on the bottom of your neighbor's boots all over your nice igloo floor, the snows of winter, the snows of spring, the snows you remember from your childhood, which were so much better than any of your modern snow. Fine snow, feathery snow, hill snow, valley snow, snow that falls in the morning, snow that falls at night, snow that falls all of a sudden just when you were going out fishing, and snow that despite all of your efforts to train them not to, the huskies have pissed on. Rob McKenna had 231 different types of rain entered into his little book, and he didn't like any of them. He shifted down another gear and the lorry heaved its revs up. It grumbled in a comfortable sort of way about all of the Danish thermostatic radiator controls it was carrying. Since he had left Denmark the previous afternoon, he had been through types 31, light prickling drizzle which made roads slippery, 39, heavy spotting, 47 to 51, vertical light drizzle through to sharply slanting light and moderate drizzle, refreshing. 87 and 88, two finely distinguished varieties of vertical torrential downpour, 100, post downpour squalling cold, all the sea storm types between 192 and 213 at once, 123, 124, 126, 127, mild and intermediate cold gusting regular and syncopated cab drumming, 11, breezy droplets, and now his least favorite of all, 17. Rain type 17 was a dirty bladder, bladdering against his windshield so hard that it didn't make much odds whether he had his wipers on or off. He tested this theory by turning them off briefly, but as it turned out, the visibility did get quite a lot worse. It just failed to get better when he turned them back on. In fact, one of the wiper blades began to flap off. Swish, swish, flop, swish, swish, flop, swish, swish, flop, swish, flop, swish, flop, flop, flap, scrape. He pounded his steering wheel, kicked the floor, thumped his cassette player until it suddenly started playing Barry Manilow, thumped it again until it stopped again, and swore and swore and swore and swore and swore. It was at the very moment that his fury was peaking that there loomed swimmingly in his headlights, hardly visible through the bladder, a figure by the roadside, a poor, bedraggled figure, strangely attired, wetter than an otter in a washing machine and hitching. Poor miserable sod! thought Rob McKenna to himself, realizing that here was somebody with a better right to feel hard done by than himself. Must be chilled to the bone. Stupid to be out here hitching on a filthy night like this. All you get is cold, wet, and lorries driving through puddles at you. He shook his head grimly, heaved another sigh, gave the wheel a turn, and hit a large sheet of water square on. See what I mean? he thought to himself as he plowed swiftly through it. You get some right bastards on the road. Splattered in his rearview mirror a couple of seconds later was the reflection of the hitchhiker drenched by the roadside. For a moment he felt good about this. A moment or two later he felt bad about feeling good about it. Then he felt good about feeling bad about feeling good about it and satisfied drove on into the night. At least it made up for finally having been overtaken by the Porsche he had been diligently blocking for the last twenty miles. And as he drove on, the rain clouds dragged down the sky after him, for, though he did not know it, Rob McKenna was a rain god. All he knew was that his working days were miserable, and he had a succession of lousy holidays. All the clouds knew was that they loved him, and wanted to be near him, to cherish him, and to water him. 
Over the course of our story, Rob McKenna runs into Arthur Dent, who he tells about his book, with all of his rain types listed in it, as well as the diary that he's kept for the past 20 or so years, illustrating everywhere he's been, what he was doing, and how the weather was. And it was horrible. Arthur, frustrated with Rob McKenna, tells him that perhaps he should show his book to somebody important, like the news media, which Rob McKenna does. Later in our story, we run into Rob McKenna again, who's once again driving a lorry. This is, of course, after he's already been published widely throughout national papers and media print as a rain god. Subsequently, after the articles were released, a group of rampant meteorologists brought him into their offices to study him and concluded that he was not, in fact, a rain god, but rather a supernormal, not paranormal, because people already understand the meaning of the word paranormal, but no, a supernormal incremental precipitation inducer. Rob goes on later in the story to explain that the reason that the scientists called him that was because they needed to give him a name that reflected their ownership over the intellectual concept of what he represented. That's why they didn't use the word paranormal, because people already think they know what paranormal means. If everybody just went around calling me a rain god, that'd suggest everybody knows something the scientists don't. Well, they couldn't have that, so they call it something which says it's theirs and not everybody else's. And if you ever discover that you can understand it, or indeed pronounce it, they'll just rename it something different. Well, that's it for me, folks. But before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final word that Rob McKenna has to say on the subject of snowflakes, rainfall, rain gods, and all 97 genders. You see, if they find something they can't understand, they like to call it something normal people can't understand. Then they set about finding some way of proving it's not what everybody else says it is, but something they say it is. My sex change operation got boxed. My guardian angel fell asleep on the watch Now all I've got is a Barbie doll crotch I've got an 